I'm going to start with some words in Polish, so please excuse me. Uh, but I want to honor the fact that uh, I'm in Poland. It's my third time in this beautiful country. So, Chin dobre, dziękuję, sa szybite. Sorry. <laughs> okay, some of the images that we're going to see here, see here today are a little intense, uh, so you are, you are, you are warned. Um, and I want to start by thank you the organizers of the CARE Conference, Anam International, of course, the activists here present, all of you for being here, and a special thanks to, as Chrissy said, the reason we are here today, animals, for all the love that they give us with all we've taken from them. In a cage on a factory farm in Spain, 2007. She just had her babies and they play unaware of what awaits their mother and them. I entered this farm 16 years ago with other activists to help rescue one of her babies. Gracie. Potential. We hear so much about human potential. Will we reach the stars? Will we live forever? Hopefully not. Will we achieve world peace? We feel a deep sense of loss for those humans who didn't make it to adulthood. Who could they have become? How would they have made a difference? But as, but as I'm sure you will agree with me, there is no greater gift than to reach one fullest potential, to live a fulfilling life, to be happy. And while some of us strive to reach our human potential, Endless limitations are set on the potential of other animals. A cage that stops this hen from spreading her wings as animal equality documented on a farm in India. Bars keep this pig from being able to nurse her baby as we documented in Spain. Barns and walls keep this baby chicken from going outside in a farm in Germany. And her own body becomes a trap, a trap she can't escape as she grows so quickly, so big, that she lives in absolute suffering from day seven. And an entire industry keeps a mother pig from raising and nurturing her baby, her baby calf, while her baby yells for her mother. These are all photos of animal equality investigations. In factory farms, the potential to live a meaningful, fulfilling life is lost. It is stolen, it is denied. And even when animals fight, and they do, they don't give up, they fight for their life, their potential, their potential to live a fulfilling life, to be happy, is crushed. And what bigger example of speciesism, of pure speciesism, to think about our potential, human potential. Will we reach the stars? Will we live forever while we crush animal potential? But there is a happy story. 
Gracie was allowed to be herself. I met Gracie personally in 2006. Gracie was very, very stubborn, as I'm sure some of you are here today. She did not like being lifted or put in places she hadn't chosen. Gracie was a matriarch. She was six pigs, the only female. Gracie explored the wonders of nature. She smelled the flowers and she dug her nose in the earth every morning looking for treasure. Gracie died a few years ago, a long and a happy life at a sanctuary, loved and protected. The oldest pig, so the legend goes, to ever live in Spain. Gracie was realized potential. Gracie was one in a few, one in a billion. This talk is about potential, our potential, animals' potential, and the potential of our movement. Factory farms stop animals from reaching their potential. And our movement, those who see past the bars, the barns, and the walls, can change that. And I truly believe not only do we have the potential to do so, but I believe it is our responsibility. Our animal liberation movement started decades ago with liberations of animals in laboratories and hunt saboteurs between, standing between hunters and their rifles to save animals. And our movement's history can be found in Western and Eastern philosophy. After what all of us here have accomplished, are we just at the beginning or are we close to achieving our goals? One thing is clear to me. We didn't just show up here. We belong to a movement of people who have endured and fought for decades. Many of us here, many of you that I know personally, and hundreds of people before us have felt the beatings of bullfighters and other animal abusers. We have felt the whip of hunters on our backs. We have felt the fear of getting caught in undercover investigations. And we have felt, I have felt personally, like some of you here, the unfairness of arrests by the industry and unfair portrayals in the media. Wins, failures, and absolutely terrible and heartbreaking losses. Like the death of Jill Phillips, a mother crushed to death on February 1995 under the wheels of a truck for protesting against the transport of other mother's babies, baby coughs. As any social movement, we have our heroes and we also have our victims and we should remember them. We didn't just show up here. We are a movement with decades of history and we should know and become familiar with that history. Together we have rescued thousands of animals and we have helped them reach their potential. Like this hen rescued by animal equality. 
he or she is feeling the sun for the first time. We have passed some of the most important animal protection laws in the world. Laws such as the ban on gestation crates in the UK. Laws such as the banning of male chick killing in Italy, France, and Austria. And Alice is here with us today. She was one of the people behind the ban of male chick killing in Italy. Please give it up to Alice. <laughs> and laws like countries in Germany who have banned cages for hens. Dozens of companies, thanks to your work, including the biggest in the world, have committed to improving the lives of pigs, chickens, and hens, the most abused animals on the planet. And countries like France, Austria, and Japan, also thanks to many of the ones who are here today, a total of 17 countries have banned fur farms. Millions of people have joined our journey, our movement to end the worst cruelties and adopted a plant-based diet. Our movement is strong. Don't let anyone tell you anything different. Our movement is strong. Our movement is strong. And it's reached maturity. Strong enough to be self-critical. We have something those who benefit from animal abuse don't. And never forget this, doesn't matter how much money they have, how much energy they put in, we have purpose. And purpose, purpose makes our potential limitless. Our movement, our wins, our failures, our terrible losses, are telling us something. And if we listen, we can hear important lessons from the past and from the present that will help us maximize our potential. Animals need us to be effective. Henry Spira, perhaps one of the most effective activist to ever have existed in the US was critical in the 70s of the anti-vivisection movement that came before him. According to him, after a century of the anti-vivisection movement having little impact on animal experiments in the US and in the UK, it was time to ask himself one question. What can I do about it? Henry focused on achieving meaningful results for animals and achievable wins that could be measured. By protesting, engaging with the public, the media, the politicians, and buying stocks to have access to shareholder meetings, a strategy that is still used today by some of the most innovative organizations in the world, like the Accountability Board in the US. He achieved some of the movement's first wins in the US. Henry Spira, basically by himself, convinced the American Museum of Natural History to end animal experiments. And he forced Revlon after buying shares of Revlon to end animal experiments in cosmetics. Henry is telling us something from the past and I think we should listen. 
Henry, who was very close to my heart, he died in 1998, fighting for animals till his last breath. He decided to spend his last years fighting for farmed animals because he realized that they were the ones who needed the most help. And Henry, Henry Spira, left us with some important questions. How can we achieve results within a minimum, sorry, within a workable time frame? How do we turn it into a specific goal? And how are we measuring our success? Thank you, Henry. Animals need us to be strategic. Fur farming was banned in Austria in 2004. The second country in the world after the UK to ban fur farming. And it had ripple effects across Europe. It was a novel and interesting approach that was followed by Martin Baluch, who unfortunately is not with here today, and other key Austrian activists from VGT. Instead of thinking all or nothing, they decided that they would think laterally and be strategic. After six Austrian provinces had banned fur farming, there was three left. They worked to pass such strict conditions on fur farms that no fur farm in Austria was commercially viable. Farmers, they had to give mink access to water, meaning the cost of keeping these animals outweighed the profits. Ultimately, making fur farming unsustainable in Austria and leading to a total ban in 2004. We can achieve so much laterally. As Martin Baluch, a hero of the animal movement in Europe and in the world, teaches us. So how can we be more strategic? Analyze a company. Analyze a goal entirely. Analyze an industry. What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? Understand who the decision makers are and what makes them tick and understand what are the steps that you need to achieve your objective. There's Martin. Animals need focus. I have been an activist for 20 years and I, I don't say this to boast. I, I have made so, so, so many mistakes as an activist. But one thing I have learned is that animals need focus. Many causes in the world demand our attention, many human causes. And many, many, many animals need help. But focus is key to help animals. Let me repeat it because it took me almost 10 years to learn this. Focus is key to help animals. You will be pulled in so many directions, so many social causes, so many other animal issues. But I humbly believe, and I share with you today, that I think we should focus on those animals who die and the largest number and suffer the most. And those animals we can have a measurable impact on. That is farmed animals. If we do so, we can count the animals we impact by the millions. Prop 12 ban on cages and sale of caged animal products in California. 
one of the most advanced animal protection laws in the world. One million pigs, 40 million hens impacted. It will come into effect next year. The passing of the first animal protection laws in the state of Hidalgo, Mexico. 43 million animals impacted a year. The ban on gestation crates in Europe moving to group housing in many countries. 10 million mother pigs impacted a year. The ban of male chick killing in Germany. 45 million innocent baby chicks impacted a year. Behind all of these big numbers, there's individuals. That's actress and activist Rooney Mara on an investigation with animal equality. And as she says, behind every number, there is an individual. An individual that needs focus. Animals need system change. There is so much value in getting people one-to-one -to, -one to go vegan. But if the easiest and the cheapest option continues to be in participating in animal abuse, unfortunately, and it's not their fault, it's the way society works, many people will continue to do so. So we must focus on system change. Thanks to the work of Rachel Acheson and Mayor Eric Adams in New York, hospitals in New York now offer plant-based options to their patients by default. Not only is it better and healthier for the patients, it's better for the animals. But it's also the easiest option. And people will tend to do what is easier. Thanks to the work of the Vegan Society in Austria, to Animal International in Poland. Let's give it up to Animal International and Animal International in Poland. Thank you. Thank you, I've experienced firsthand the vegan delights in, uh, in Poland. And thanks to organizations like Veganuary and many of you here, eating vegan in many places in the UK and in Europe is as easy and as cheap as choosing animal products. So what lessons is Anima Internationally, Eric Adams, Rachel Acheson leaving us? Let's ask ourselves, how can our activism change a system and not only an individual? And I'm not saying that individual change is not important. I changed individually. But we should empower people to make better choices. Animals need work. Animals need work and they need patience. Our energy and our time are limited. So not only do we need to focus, I, I, I'm sorry, but we need to put in the work. We need to work. We need to put in the work for animals. And I know so many of you here, everyone probably who does so. Like Connor, for example, he was telling me yesterday, he puts in the work. Thank you, Connor, for all you do. You're a hero. And what we have ahead of us, look, people, this is not going to be simple. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be Disneyland or La La Land or a walk in the park. I myself have been arrested many times. And like many of you here, faced prison and years of possible repression. 
It took Dulce Ramirez, Animal Equality's Vice President for Latin America, 10 years to pass the first animal protection laws in Mexico. She strategically started with animals and circuses. And she built a coalition of politicians, of people, and then moved on to farmed animals. It will take decades, decades, to change legislation as we're seeing in Europe. It will take years to build a successful, sustainable project and organization. And it will take months to win a campaign. We've been campaigning against Denny's horrible company in the US, horrible company since January. And now we have a banner in Times Square calling out their CEO to please eliminate gestation crates. So focus, work hard, be strategic, focus on system change. That is what I humbly believe will help us as a movement, not only achieve our potential, an animal potential, but ultimately the reason we are here today, animal liberation, maybe sooner than we think. So I'm going to ask you to open your copy books. And have a pen on hand. You can share pens if you want. I think it's okay. Five minutes, okay. So I want to ask you to close your eyes. Please close your eyes. I'll do it with you. I can't do it with you because I have to read. Okay, I'm going to go over the five minutes. I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry, but uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. You're on your deathbed. Please, please picture this. You're, you're on your deathbed. You take a deep breath, knowing that this will be probably second or the third last one. Your family, your husband, your wife, your partner, they've gathered around you. And others have gathered around you, non-human animals. Those you felt so much for and you did so much for in your life. This is a very intense experience, so I ask you to really dive deep into it. Everybody is mourning you, your passing, your last moments. What are they saying? What would you want them to say? You're leaving us with what legacy? Who were you in this life? Who where are you for animals and your fellow human beings? So take a deep breath and open your eyes. And I'm going to ask you to spend a few minutes writing in your copybook whatever came up. You can choose to write or not. You can choose to share it with a colleague, 
whatever you want, but I'll give you a few minutes now to write it on your copybook. I will not ask you to share. What did you hope was said? What do you wish your impact was? What was it related to? Hopefully, hopefully, we are far away from that day. But this day, it will come. We will all die. We will all die. No matter what Silicon Valley says, we will die. Maybe some, maybe some won't, but I imagine we will all die. And today, today, now, we can determine what we will be proud of and what we will regret on our deathbed. There are things we can do today, decisions, that we can make that will help us maximize our potential, to maximize the movement's potential, to maximize animal potential. It will be different for all of us. Some will be great designers. Others will be great writers. Others will be great organizers. Others will be great at numbers, that's not me. And some, a lot of you, will be great leaders. Every single one of us is important. It really, it really does not matter what you do for animals. There's no better or worse. There's no hierarchy. It really doesn't matter. As long as you're doing it for animals and with purpose. As long as you are reaching your unique highest potential. So how can we do this? And I'm about to finish. Not really, but <laughs> I'm sorry. Start with yourself. And I say this to myself. Start with yourself, Sharon. The most effective activists in the world, like Henry Spira, they looked at themselves in the mirror. They took ownership of their actions, and then they changed the world. We care more about ourselves than others, but spend most of our time thinking about what others think of us, said Marcus Aurelius. What a silly thing to do. So let's stop. Let's stop thinking about others and focus on ourselves. Let's stop the anger, the resentfulness, the envy, something we all feel, it's, it's human nature. Expect from yourself more than you expect from others. And most importantly, demand from yourself before you demand from others. But this isn't about you, it's not about me, it's not about us. One of the most important activists of our generation in the US, Josh Balk, who is behind some of the greatest changes in the US with other people, including Prop 12 in California, confessed to me that he says to himself every morning, I am not important. Can you, can you imagine being a household name, a reference, people like, look up to, and you say to yourself, I am not important. Ego says this is about me, my name, 
my accomplishments, and why not, my organization. Ego is fear and insecurity. Purpose, the reason we are here is purpose and potential, creates possibilities for our movement, for animals, and for our fellow activists. Ego says me. Potential and purpose says us. It says animals. And respond with courage. You will encounter, I've been an activist for 20 years, and again, I'm not bo boosting, I just want to share some lessons that I've learned, maybe the harder way, you can learn them a simpler way. You will find incredible obstacles. The meat and the dairy industry will try to destroy you. Repression, and sometimes, why not, maybe other difficult activists. You can choose, you cannot choose what happens, but you can choose one thing, only one thing. You can choose how you respond and you can choose the actions you take. So let me say that again because this has been revolutionary for me. You can choose how you respond. When Dulce was told, Dulce Ramirez in Mexico, that farmed animals would never be included in the same animal protection laws and cats and dogs, she chose she would respond differently. She presented the first chapter of a law to protect farmed animals in Jalisco, and it failed. It got rejected. But that didn't stop her. She didn't give up, and she took the same initiative to Hidalgo, and it got approved. It has now been approved in Hidalgo, in Puebla, and presented in Veracruz and Quintana Roo. Dulce, before the end of the year, will go back to Jalisco with her successes in Hidalgo and in Veracruz, sorry, and in Puebla, to present the initiative again. An initiative that will give protections to millions of farmed animals in Mexico. She's also working to change the Mexican constitution so farmed animals are protected by the constitution. So let's go back, our wonderful Alice again, who we deeply miss at animal equality, to that moment earlier. With those animals you impacted, mourning your imminent passing. You've done all you can. You've focused on what's important. You've saved and impacted millions of animals. Your legacy, your body, your mind won't live on, but your legacy will. And I ask you today, humbly, to commit with me to reaching your highest potential for animals, whatever that is. And now, take your potential, your purpose, yourself, the movement, and the animals, and please, I ask you, lead us through the revolution that animals need. Thank you very much. Oh. Thank you so much, Sharon. And please stay here for a second. We have time for one question. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's asked by this wonderful guy called Thomas. Um, so Is that you? <laughs> yeah, that's me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so we have um, uh, upvoting um, 
you, you got to vote for your favorite questions in the app if I didn't already tell you. And this one is the most popular one, I'm just saying. Uh, so, <laughs> so the question is, some of us could probably make a lot of money if we didn't work for animal rights organizations. So do you think more activists should focus on making money to donate instead of working here? Oh, sorry, yeah. Um, <laughs> No. <laughs> no. Um, I, I, I think our movement at the moment is definitely lacking funding, but what we're lacking the most is purpose, potential, and people who are fully dedicated to ending animal exploitation. So if you can make billions and donate to animal equality, um, to animal equality or to any other... <laughs> Or to Anima International, or to all of the organizations, do it. But um, I think it's more important to live a life of purpose and potential and to dedicate your life uh, to whatever that potential is to help animals. So I hope I answer the question. Thank you. And I, then we're going to do one more, actually, because okay. we have one more. Um, it's uh, from Anna, and it's, she asks... Hi, Anna. <laughs> what do you see as the biggest challenge facing the movement? Not understanding that obstacles and difficulties and hard work are part of a social revolution like the one we want to bring forward and that in order to do so we need strength, we need purpose and we need gratitude. Uh, that is the biggest obstacle, I think. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Please.